Hello everyone and welcome to the St John Ambulance National Youth Conference. We are here today at the Opportunities Marketplace to discuss all things National Youth Public Speaking Competition. So at this Marketplace store, store, we are going to be discussing what the National Youth Public Speaking Competition is, how you can get involved, you're going to get to meet one of our finalists from 2022, Esme, we're going to be talking a little bit about chocolate, and we're going to invite you to join us for even more speaking comp. So at the start of all our sessions, we have a session objective. And today's objective is that everyone attending this session will want to start their public speaking journey and enter the National Youth Public Speaking Competition selection round. So what is the National Youth Public Speaking Competition? The National Youth Public Speaking Competition is a platform for social activism. It develops transferable skill sets so that young people can feel encouraged to develop uh, their public speaking abilities further and access opportunities both inside our organisation and outside our organisation that will set them apart from their peers. Public speaking is a skill that sets young people apart so it's really important that we develop our self-assurance and look at the things that will, that will enhance CVs and support applications, job interviews in both academic and vocational fields. Public speaking is a development experience. However, in educational settings, it can be exclusive to specific groups of students. So in St John Ambulance, we encourage young people of all ages from all youth programmes to share their passions as we provide you with mentoring as well as development focused feedback to increase your confidence. It's really all about confidence and confidence is key through this real lived experience of public speaking. So how do you get involved? First step is to sign up to an open workshop. These are development sessions that support young people in entering the qualifying rounds. So this includes public speaking fundamentals and key tips, as well as information about how the selection rounds work. Following the open workshops, there is the selection round. So young people are able to submit videos of them giving a speech to camera on a topic that relates to health and social care. And it's really important that those topics are things that they feel passionately about. Then the 12 highest scoring young people marked by a panel of young ambassadors will qualify to the National Youth Public Speaking Competition 2023. Those young people will have access to closed workshops and be supported by their individual mentors to have the best preparation in order to be ready for the national competition. They will work on two tasks, an individual speech task and a build together team task. The National Youth Public Speaking Competition is a residential event. So over the weekend, young people will be involved in even more in-person workshops to support and prepare them even further for the future opportunities they will access, but also for the competition the following days. Young people at the competition will deliver their pitches from the Build Together task and their individual speeches from the independent task to a panel of senior leaders, their audience, of friends, family members, key stakeholders and others as well. So, meet Esme. Esme was one of our finalists in 2022 and they discussed all about Tourette's. Hello everybody. So as Chloe said, I'm Esme and I took part in the National Public Speaking Competition last year in 2022. Um, I decided to take part in the competition because when I heard about it, I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to speak from my own experience, not only to help me, but to help a lot of other people in the same position as me. So as Chloe said, I spoke about Tourette syndrome and tick stigma so I could correctly educate more people on the condition. If you think about Tourette syndrome, just think about the first word or phrase that comes to your mind. A lot of people will go straight to swearing and that's the stigma that's behind Tourette's. However, that's actually not true. Only one in 10 people with Tourette syndrome actually have coprolalia, which is a swearing tick. I use that exact example in my speech and it's a really, it's a really effective way to engage the audience with what you're saying because you can get your point across and in my example I took what the audience thought they knew was right and corrected them which would have affected them in some way. 
if you can manage to affect the audience in some way, it it will stick with them more because you might have made them think more deeply about what they think is right or oh my god did I really go along with the stigma all this time if you shock them it will definitely affect them in some way what I took away from the competition was how important having a team was with you and the importance of communication when you're up on stage delivering your speech in front of everyone there it's really scary and really daunting however it is so empowering when you look around the room and in front of you you have your team there sat in front of you to support you and when you realize that everyone in the room and everyone who's tuning in is there to listen to you and to support you it is honestly like no other experience the competition helped me to understand a lot about saint john and the heart values because i i only um, i only recently joined saint john when i joined the competition I was only been in the organisation for about a year, so it helped me to make a lot of new friends and I could get help because I had connections. So I, I got help with St John related work outside of the competition as well. And I was also introduced to a lot of new opportunities, such as networks that I hadn't heard about before. And I got a lot of advice around careers from people who are at university or have, um, or have graduated from university and now in a healthcare profession. I was also introduced to quite a few of the adults, really important adults in St. John, which led me on to create my own project about um, equity and diversity. My final word is don't go into the competition with an aim to educate people, or you're doing it to bump your CV, or because you've been forced into doing it by a unit. Go there because you want to do it. Go and have fun and just enjoy it. Push yourself out of your comfort zone, meet new people, gain new experiences, but just go and have fun. So Esme and I are now going to talk a little bit about chocolate. As a pair, we're going to debate chocolate and discuss what, and you will be able to discuss what you think was good about our pitches or bad about our pitches, and ask yourself how we can improve on our gracious disagreement. So, having researched chocolate for the past two years, I can conclusively share that Cabri Freddo is the most beloved chocolate of the nation. No, 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 no. You're wrong. Listen, chocolate, the nation's favourite creamy treat. In 2010, Sir Chocky McChocoface did a study suggested Smarties were the happiest chocolate. With rainbow colours and an array of flavours, Smarties were voted as one of the most uh, voted as one of the nation's favourites. Put your hand up if you love chocolate. Well, our friend Freddo is known for comforting, is known for being comforting and cost effective in ways. Having expanded the brand in 2015 with the introduction of Freddo Faces, it's clearly a successful enterprise selling over 30,000 items in the past year alone. Freddo has now expanded to make teddies and is known to the British public as a household comfort. Eating Freddo's has even been linked to improving emotional health, with 65% of Brits recording that they felt happier after seeing a Freddo return to their Christmas selection boxes. So, how could Esme and I have improved on that pitch? What could have made that debate about chocolate a little bit better? I think one of the things we did really well was including statistics and making sure that we were both very well spoken, um, our punctuation was very strong and the pauses we took were very intentional. What do you think we could have improved on Esme? I think we could have acknowledged, like if, for example, I could have acknowledged your point of view more by going, yeah, OK, I understand that, but this is what I think. So I took it into consideration rather than just dismissing it and going, no, you're wrong. Definitely. And I think that's one of the really strong techniques in Gracious Disagreement. It's taking their point, but changing the perspective so that you've acknowledged what they're saying. So if you would like to do more debates about chocolate, um, you can follow the QR code to our expression of interest to be emailed all about the newest speaking comp updates first. Our Fundamental Elements workshop is on the 14th of the 11th at 7pm or you can watch it on record on our YouTube channel. 
equally, the selection round opens on the 15th of the 11th. So that workshop will be able to support you in entering the selection round.